make a start then because all I'm doing basically is putting this little card together you know and everybody said how do you make that Um, I have done one of these before but I thought I'd just update it a little bit Um, I mean they are so simple but they're so effective and um, so I thought I'd just do it so I've done all the stenciling and everything for this so let's let's just put this little um, I don't even know what you'd call it it's like a panel box card I suppose but um, it's a little stand up card and it looks so cute with this little mushroom house on it so let's just move that out of the way and let's just go straight into the measurements hope you remembered your pen and your paper um, so you're going to need for this little card two pieces of card for your actual base of your card your first one now these are all in centimetres so your base piece of card needs to be 28.5 by 14 centimetres and you need to score that at 14 18 23 and 27 centimetres all right and then you just need to fold and burnish those score lines which obviously i've already done and then what you want to do is secure this piece to the back piece and the easiest way is just to fold this piece of card in half and glue this this one couple of centimeters strip down to the back of this card so i'm using lisa's glue because it's the best glue i've ever found and then all i'm going to do is just fold that down and just burnish that that little fold line so that I'm just sticking that piece of card down to the back piece so that when you stand it up it's already standing up on its own okay that's so simple it, it's just so easy and then your second piece of card which is going to give you your panel at the front needs to be 15.5 by 9 centimeters and you're going to score that at 10 and 14 and a half so you've got that little fold line there again to give you your where you're going to fold it and fold it up like that okay but you're not gluing this to this piece of card what you're actually doing is you're putting that panel on there and you're gluing this to the back piece of card okay so again the easiest way to do it is glue your piece of card to your first fold here and fold this over like you did on the first piece and glue it to the back see what I should have done was put this paper down on here before I glued this piece down so now I'm going to have to change this and cut this down a bit so I'm just going to make a little pencil mark there and a little pencil mark there and I'm just going to cut that because I should have stuck it down first and I didn't if you're making this at home and you cut this piece of paper make sure you glue it down onto your card before you start because <laughs> it makes life so much easier in your designer papers this piece was measuring 13 and a half by 10 centimeters okay but it isn't now because I've cut it down because I did it wrong I can still save it that's the important thing and the reason I would I would put this piece down first and put it behind this is just to give it a little bit more security and it it just it would just look better I feel right I've put that piece down and I'm going to decorate all my panels before I do any more gluing so my other two pieces and these are all from um box kit one I think my other two pieces are 13 and a half by four and a half centimeters and that's going on the front and then this piece is 13 and a half by three and a half centimeters and that bit's going on there like that okay so let's put all those down and then you can see my other pieces are contrasting pieces to go on the the other panel piece that I'm going to add to the front it's such a simple card that it is just it's obviously very easy to make mistakes so there's my my first piece okay that's the base of my card all right and then this piece is going on the front but I'm going to add my papers before I do anything else and then I can't do anything else wrong so this piece that goes on the front panel is eight and a half by nine and a half centimeters 
okay and I'm gonna pop that on the front like so and then this piece here is eight and a half by three and a half centimeters and that's going on that top piece there and then we can put this piece together to give us our little panel on the front so I'm going to put that piece on there like so and these papers are so pretty but obviously you can use whatever papers you've got now I do think that if I stand that up it will work let's glue this bit down first I'm going to put myself two little pencil marks like I did before just so that I know where I'm gluing okay I can rub those out later and then I'm just going to add my glue down onto my papers here rather than onto the panel and then I won't go above where I need to be if you get my drift so I'm going to pop this down on here it's going level with the bottom of the card like so just move it over a little bit Try and get it as central as you can, and then it'll look better. Now then, if I stand that up, yes it will. I'm going to, let's just keep my fingers crossed and hope that I'm not talking through the top of my head. Add your glue to your little um, couple of centimetre flap here. And do exactly the same as you did on the first piece of card. Glue this straight down onto the back. And hopefully it will work out right there you go see it does work so then your card will stand up like that okay and then all you need to do is put your little mushroom house on the front like so isn't this cute and the colors that i've used on here are sugar candy shocking pink straw hat margarita eucalyptus leaves and almond frosting and I think they're beautiful colours I think I, I really like those colours I think they're smashing so I'm going to 3d this little house onto the front of that card onto that panel I mean how quick and easy despite the mistake how quick and easy is that card and then my sentiment is from the um, foiled and plain sticker sentiments and then that can go just across the top there I'm not going to 3d that one um, primarily because I want to get onto the leafy flourish card which was the main aim of today's live so I'm just going to pop this on the top here and I've backed it onto some card to sort of um, make it stand out a little bit and i've chosen a card that sort of fits in with the colors that i've used on the on the house okay it will stand up i've used lisa's extra smooth um white card for this um but i just think it's such a cute little card i just think it's i just think it's smashing if you find that it won't stand up what i did on the last one because i had the same problem with the last one what I did on the last one was I just added an extra piece of card in here along the back. And I have done that card before and it, it's in, in our YouTube channel. I couldn't find it the other day. It, it's very, very similar. Um, and, and the mechanism of the card is just so easy. So, you know, it, it is there and they are really, really quick and easy cards. And you can just add whichever whichever image you want on the front. You could even use one of the flowers you know the wildflower spray would look good on something like this and what i would do if you were using something like that is make that panel a little bit wider so that your wildflower spray didn't look too out of place but any of your any of your layering stencils with your flowers and dyes and things would look equally as good on the front of that so let me just put my <coughs> ultimate two down and we will just run through what i'm going to use today so obviously I'm using these. Oh my days. These are fabulous. You remember the large foliage that Lisa bought out? 
ages and ages and ages ago one of her first die sets that she brought out um, and you all know how much I love that I find this a very similar um, concept and the shapes of the leaves and everything just they just sort of for me mirror that set really beautifully and I I love it I know I say that about everything that Lisa brings out and I know you're all thinking here she goes again this one's a favourite how can it not be I I can't help it if Lisa brings out something I like I have to say I like it and I adore this set this and the heart stripes oh my days absolutely fabulous such a such a brilliant thing to have in your stash because it can be a background it can be the main attraction you can chop it about it's so versatile it's brilliant absolutely brilliant so let's make a start with the stenciling i have already prepared all my stenciling that i'm going to use on today's card all right but i just wanted to go through the stencils with you so if i just quickly go through the other things that i've used on the card that i'm making i also used the blooming lovely dies and i i love these again a very versatile set that you will use time and time again you can use them to make flowers like this you can make them to use full flowers all sorts absolutely brilliant i'm also using the script stamp out of the textures set and you know how much i love that set i'm using the uh have a wonderful day out of the fabulous fonts stamp and die set and i'm also using the ornamental lattice as the base of my card okay so that's everything that i'm using so i'll just put those out of the way and then we'll just move on to doing the stencils now i haven't used texture card for this i've just used lisa's extra smooth white card so what i'm going to use color wise on here is the anthracite and rhubarb jam now rhubarb jam is from the second set and obviously the anthracite's been out for a while as well but i don't want to go too heavy on here i want it to be reasonably bold but I don't want to go over the top. I don't want it to be totally black. OK, I want it to have that that beautiful greeny bluey hue that this anthracite has. So I'm going to take a lot of the ink that I've just put on the brush um, into the into the lid. And then I'm going to take whatever excess there is on onto the stencil. And I'm going to go quite lightly to start with and see what it looks like. If I think it needs a little bit of extra colour, then I will just go in and go over the stenciling again and add a little bit more. But the beauty of the anthracite for me is that you can get so many different shades of colour just off one inking on your brush. Because if you put heavy pressure, you'll get a really dark, almost black colour through your stencil. If you start off light, you'll get that beautiful bluey green hue that the anthracite has got. And depending on how much pressure you put on, you will get different gradients of colour through your stencil. So it's I just think it's a, a really clever little ink pad. One that I will never be without. OK, so we'll start off like that. I like that. It's not too dark. It's just dark enough. OK. So the second set, again, second stencil, sorry, is also leaves, but I want to do these a different colour. So I'm going to change my anthracite for the rhubarb jam. And again, I am going to go reasonably lightly because I don't want this, any of this really, to be totally dark. So I'm going to start off quite light with this rhubarb jam. And these are the colours that I've used on today's card that I'm going to put together for you. So, you know, you're getting, um, you're getting a view of what I've already done, if you like. But after I've put this card together, I've got four other different versions of the stenciling. I haven't die cut them and I haven't embossed them yet. I've just literally stenciled them um, just to show you how different this set can look 
depending on what colours you use. Okay, so we're just going quite light with that rhubarb jam. And like I say, if I'm if I'm not happy with what it looks like, I can go back in and add some more. But I think, yeah, I like that. See, I don't want it to be totally in your face. I want it to be subtle, and and that's what I've got there. So with these, I'm going to go back into my anthracite, and I'm going to go a little bit heavier. Not a great deal just a little bit okay so again I'm taking a lot of the ink off the brush I'm going to start quite light because I want to build this up gradually because I don't want this to be I want these leaves to be a little bit darker than the base set but I don't want them to be that dark that they they stand out too much if you get me so I'm just going to go keep going back and checking I want that to be a little bit darker and obviously, the beauty of the peg system is that no matter how many times you take this off, you're going to be able to put it back in exactly the right place every single time. Absolute genius. Shall we go one more? I think we'll just go one more. Okay, I think that'll do. Yeah. See, it's different to layer one, but it's not so different that it stands out too much. And then we're going to go in and add this detail here, this branch. I love this. I just think it's it's just such a, a beautiful part of the rest of the, the set. I think it's it just makes this leafy flourish just that little bit special, I feel. So... We're going to go in here with rhubarb jam. Now you can go a little bit heavier with this because obviously this is the branch and the branch is going to be a little bit darker than the leaves. But again, I don't want to go too heavy. And that's why I'm using my wonder brush as opposed to a stencil brush. Because the stencil brush, because it's smaller, you're going to get more concentrated colour. Even if you try and keep it light, I feel that the stencil brushes will give you a more concentrated colour than if you just go over it a couple of times with your wonder brush totally up to you obviously it's your piece of artwork so you decide but for me i don't want it so deep that it really leaps off the page i want it to be in keeping with the rest so that's why i'm using the wonder brush as opposed to the stencil brush now I was going to do a set on um, black texture card with the interference inks but I've used all my pieces of black texture card out of my mixed box so I'm going to have to wait until the beautiful black texture card comes to TV at some point, hopefully soon, hint, hint. So again I'm going to just take this off have a look see if I'm happy and if not I'm going to go back and add some more now I think that's enough because it's it's just enough to make it different to the leaves do you know what I mean so now we're going to come in and we're going to add the detail into those leaves now I'm going to do opposites here so you can see some of the leaves are pink and some of the leaves are anthracite and what I'm going to do is the veins on the leaves where the leaves are pink, I'm going to use anthracite, and where the leaves are anthracite, I'm going to use pink. Okay, hope that makes sense. <clears throat> now, I am going to use a stencil brush for this, but I'm not going to... I've used rhubarb jam on this this morning, so I don't want to add any more ink until I see how much I've got on my brush. And then what I think I'll do is take it out of the lid as opposed to off the ink pad because I don't want it to be too heavy. So I'll just lift that up and have a look. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm going to keep taking my ink out of the lid as opposed to off the ink pad. And then I'm not going to go over the top heavy with my colour and spoil the effect because I don't want to do that. So I just want to get these veins on these leaves on, but I don't want to go too heavy. I need just I just need to go heavy enough 
so I'm sort of airing on the side of caution if you like until I've put a layer down and then I can go over again if necessary just make sure that I've done all the all the little grey ones and then I can go back and do the pink ones Mm -mm -mm. That'll go a little bit darker. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that. It's it's there. I can see it, but it isn't it isn't overpowering the leaves behind it. So now I'm going to go in with the anthracite. And again, I'm taking it out of the lid because again, I don't want this to be too heavy. And now I'm going onto the pink leaves, which there are fewer of. And I'm going into the pink with the anthracite just so that it swaps over and that those sort of veins stand out on each colour leaf. You don't have to, you could stick with the same colour, just go darker if you wanted. Um, but I just think I just wanted it to look a little bit different. So that was why I swapped my colours over. I think that should be enough. Yeah, I like that. So, I, as you can see, I've only used two colour ink pads. Um, you can use two, three, four, half a dozen, doesn't matter. It's whatever you want it to look like. And it can look so different depending on what colours you've, you've used. So, that's what I've inked today. Okay. And if I show you the one I did yesterday in preparation, you can see how different it looks to the one I've done today. I've used exactly the same colours but I have done this one slightly differently. It's got glitter on it. Um, I've gone a little bit heavier with this one okay but I still think it looks equally as beautiful and you can see that I stuck with rhubarb jam on the grey leaves and the red leaves. So you know it, it's whatever look you're after you can change it up in so many different ways all right so let's put the card together and then i'll show you the others that i've stenciled as well just to show you how different it can look so the base of my card as i said is the fabulous um ornamental lattice and i've cut it all out i've cut the main piece in lisa's um i think they were called jewel tone cards and um, she bought this out right sort of right near the beginning of of her being independent and it is really good quality card but i know that it, it's not available anymore but i've still got some so i thought well, i might as well use it because it matches my colors perfectly so i've cut two bases out and then i've cut the lattice out and i've stuck the lattice to the base and really just to give it a little bit more stability when i stand it up okay i've already put my um piece in the in the center where i would write my greeting or stamp a greeting or whatever and then on here the pieces of the die that that come with the set so th these pieces here i'll take that off there so you can see this is the back piece which i've cut two of and then the lattice which i cut one of and then stuck it onto the front and then these three here give you your sort of central um, interest piece okay so this piece is what i use to cut my inner all right and i've also cut one to go on the front here so that's this piece but what i wanted to do on here was i wanted to use the text stamp to put some interest in the background because then on top of that is going to go my lattice piece in grey because obviously everything else is pink and grey okay but what i wanted to do was i wanted to stamp the text but i didn't want it to come outside this lattice piece here all right so what i did when i cut this piece i kept the piece of card that i cut it out of to use as a mask if you like so if i just bring that down ever so slightly so that my piece of card fits onto that white piece on the back all right and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to flip that out because i don't need that and then i'm just going to add a little bit of tape 
top and bottom just to hold this in place so that I've got a frame that I can work inside with that text stamp. Okay. So I'll just peel that off there and move that out of the way a second. Then I can stamp my text in here and not worry about it being where I don't want it to be. All right. So I am going to use the rhubarb jam and I'm not worried about it being a perfect stamped image. OK, because I think that adds to the effect as well. But I am going to take this out of here and move this out of the way. So I don't need that anymore, but I want to keep the silicon mat. OK, and then I'm just going to ink this up in rhubarb jam. So exactly the same and um, still using the, the blending ink pad because they do stamp really now, really nicely. And then I'm just going to add this across the back here. And as I say, I'm not worried about it being a perfect image. It doesn't bother me. I do want a little bit. I want it to go right to the edge. So we'll try and get it as near to the edge as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect because obviously you're going to put your lattice over the top. So it's just to give it a little bit of interest in the background, really, um, just for something to look slightly different to just a bare lattice piece on a white background and I'll just fill that last little bit in and by keeping that grey frame around the edge I know that I'm not going to go where I don't want it to be Let's just fill that little bit in there okay that'll do so you can see it isn't perfect far from it but it doesn't matter because when I take this away You can see that I have actually got my my inking all within that piece there so that when I add this on this isn't going to go outside not by much anyway okay so I'm going to add that down to there and then I can put that onto my main piece of card But it's it's such a fabulous set that you can you can mix with what you've already got. So one of the ones that I show you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all into cards and then I can add them into the album in the group. Um, and the one that I'm going to one of the ones I'm going to show you, I'm going to team with the um, acorn set that Lisa bought out right at the beginning. So I just think I just think it'll set it off. So that's my my main piece, my lattice piece that's going in the middle here. OK, and what I want to do is 3D it. And of course, if you wanted to, if you've got the stand uh, die set that Lisa bought out, you could just make this into one flat card and just use the stand instead. Just pop that down there, and make sure that's central. Okay, and then my leafy flourish is going in the middle here. And again, I want to 3D this because I want this to stand proud. I think it deserves to stand proud because if I lift it, you'll still be able to see the text in the background. Um, and I just think it it's just so beautiful. It deserves to have, take centre stage if you like. Now, I know on the package it's like that, but I actually really like it upside down. Um, so that's how I'm going to use it. And it's just going to hang off the edge of that frame, all right, like so. And then, this is where my blooming lovely flowers come in. I decided to use the anthracite and the rhubarb jam and coloured the flowers and I've just put them randomly together to make a, a larger flower. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop two lots of pads on here just to stand this up a little bit higher than the rest. And you can see in the middle I've actually used some of Lisa's kaleidoscope glitter 
again something that's been out for absolutely ages and doesn't get much of an air in so I thought I'd use it today just to lift that flower a little bit so that's going on the top there like so and then all I need to add is my sentiment if I could actually find it anyway it says have a wonderful day and it will go across here because I want it at the bottom over this side just to sort of give it a little bit of balance I was thinking up here but I think there's too much going on at the top already so I didn't want to I didn't want to come I didn't want to go up the top I wanted to come down here so I might even put it in the middle um, rather than to one side that way it might balance that flower out a little bit more so I just said I would show you some of the different colorways that I've used all right just so that you can see how different it looks now you don't always have to stick with real colors all right because yeah, nature's really weird isn't it and who says leaves have to be green does it matter it can be any color you want it can fit your card okay so on this one i used and i've written them all on the back so that i didn't forget tranquil waters juicy pineapple from set one and natural turquoise from set three so you can see that they actually all three sets blend together beautifully okay so that's that one then this one is surfs up sugar candy both from set one and pina colada from set three and um, so again two from set one and one from set three so that's that one and then i saw the rains card and i thought i really like that and i know these colors aren't the same as lorraine's but i just wanted to use the browns because i don't think i use them half enough and this is tree bark Rusty Nails, Burnt Ochre and Almond Frosting. And for me, the colours in this would make a great mail card, you know, for a, a gardener or something like that. So that's those three. And those are all set two inks. And then this one is just greens because, well, these can be green too, can't they? And I've used Woodland Moss from set one, Margarita from set two, and then Garden Sage and Pina Colada from set three. So you can see there that there are three different sets of inks all blend together absolutely beautifully and they they look stunning and you know so so different and i noticed that um if you go and have a look in the group tina's put one in the group this morning and she's added little flowers and i'm sure they're probably four point bloom flowers because i know tina loves that set um and she's just added them randomly in different places and I thought it looked really, it really lifted the card. It looked absolutely beautiful. So there are five different colourways, six if you count that one, because it's slightly different to this one. And then, of course, we've got the little mushroom house card to go as well. So those are today's cards and the different stenciling colours just to give you some ideas so thank you very much for joining me i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and spend half an hour or so with me so have a fabulous week everybody and i'll see you soon bye now mm -hmm.